What does it feel like to be jacked? Well, I can tell you in a single word. It feels incredible. Being very strong and taking up a lot of physical space changes the entire way you feel about yourself and the way that others perceive you as well. Suddenly, you become a physical presence and people can't help but sit up and take notice. You become indomitable, immovable and powerful and as a result, everything you say has more weight and more gravity to it. People listen. Bulking changes other things too. When you feel that powerful and you notice the way people start treating you, you can't help but feel far more confident too. This changes the way you walk, the way you hold yourself and the way that you present yourself. You walk like someone unstoppable and that only increases that sense of presence. And then there are all the direct practical ways that gaining muscle changes your life. You start to win play fights with your mates, you become better at sports and people start asking you to help them lift things. You know, it's just a great feeling to be thought of as someone capable and powerful, you know, instead of being the little guy who's the butt of jokes all the time. And being jacked also helps you get attention from the opposite sex. You look amazing in all your clothes. You can fill out a suit and your arms pop from white vests. And all that power and confidence is simply highly attractive to people. You even find that you start getting your way more in work and in the rest of your life as people start to take you more seriously. That and physical prowess correlates with improved brain power, so you can expect to start thinking better too. But maybe you're not bothered about all that. Maybe you're simply looking for a way to bulk up so you can become stronger and better at your sport. Or perhaps you're a bodybuilder. Whatever the case, this video series is going to act as your ultimate guide. Here you'll find everything you could possibly need to know in order to grow and you'll be given simple, straightforward steps that you can follow to do that. And the difference this time is we're going to organize it all in a way that actually works. No more half-hearted attempts and no more disappointments. The science is simple. All we have to do is put it into practice. This is really a science and not an art. The way you go about building muscle is very simple and once you know the formula, it's a simple matter of following it through to completion. There's no mystery to this formula either. It's something athletes have been using for decades. What we're going to do a bit differently though is adapt that bodybuilding formula and make it a little more adaptable so you can fit it around your busy schedule. Here's what you'll learn specifically. What your genetic potential for gaining muscle is. How to eat for bulk. How to fit your eating plan around your lifestyle. How to eat big while saving money. The secret to staying relatively lean while bulking. How to increase your strength massively. The optimum amount of training and way to train for building muscle. How to dress to look stronger. How to focus on the muscles that will create the biggest visual impact and strength gains. How to train and bulk from home. The best supplements for accelerating growth. And much more. So get ready. Let's do this. Before we dive into how you're going to bulk, the first thing we need to do is to address your current state. That means we'll be looking at your current muscle mass, your height and how much muscle you're likely to gain. We'll also be looking at the metabolic demands of your body which will tell us how many calories you'll burn in a given day. That's going to be very important for building muscle as we'll see in a moment. So for now we're going to start by assessing you in your current condition. We'll find some numbers to put your name to and while it might seem a little random, stick with it. In the videos that follow, these numbers are going to serve as your guide. Knowing yourself is crucial when it comes to gaining muscle. So first, let's calculate your current body fat percentage and lean mass. Finding out how much you weigh is very easy. All you need to do is step on a set of scales and you'll be given a precise number denoting your weight. But that on its own is not a particularly useful metric because it doesn't actually tell you anything about your muscle. 
anyone can be big. They just had to eat huge amounts of cake. But you're not trying to get fat. You're trying to get jacked. And that means you're interested in adding muscle. And it's why you need to know just how much of your current mass is muscle already. So to do this, you're going to step yourself onto a set of scales and get your weight in pounds. OK, done that. Right. I'm 176.4 pounds at 5 foot 8, by the way. So I'll be playing along with you. Now you need to work out your body fat percentage. This is the percentage of that weight that is accounted for by subcutaneous fat, and that's the fat underneath your skin. And finding this number is fortunately very easy. All you need to do is to measure the thickness of your skin, which will include that layer of fat. To do this, you need to grab a pinch of skin from the side of the tricep. So this is the spot midway between your shoulder and elbow on the outside of your arm around from the bicep. And then you want to use this chart to get your current body fat percentage. So you want to get your skin fold thickness in millimetres and that is going to give you a rough idea of your body fat percentage and you'll notice here from this chart that the percentages are different for men and women. And this is a rough estimate of course but you can also get an idea by looking at photos of people at different body fat percentages. If you can see abs but aren't covered in ripped veins, then you're probably between 13 and 10% body fat. If you can see all the striations and the veins, then you're sub 10%. Find a number that you think is a fair estimate and then subtract that percentage from your current body weight to find out what you would weigh if all of your body fat were to be removed. If you weighed 100 pounds and your body fat percentage were 10%, then you would have a lean mass of 90 pounds. Now, for me, that number is 158.76 pounds because I had 10% body fat, well, approximately. Now it's actually possible to get some more very interesting information from these numbers, which is your FFMI. That is your fat-free mass index, which is like a body mass index, but a lot more accurate because it differentiates between muscle and fat. And what's more, there is an upper limit to what your FFMI can be naturally without using steroids or other performance-enhancing drugs. And this is good because it lets us see just how much stronger we can get. To work out your FFMI, all you need to do is use this equation. FFMI equals your LBM in kilograms divided by your height in meters squared. So convert your lean body mass to kilograms, then divide it by the square of your height in meters. So when I do this with my numbers, I get a score of 23.065. The maximum it is generally agreed that you can score here is about 25. Any higher than that and people will perhaps rightly, suspect that you may be using steroids. This was the finding according to one study that surveyed a lot of natural athletes to see where they would peak. This is your genetic limit and beyond that you'll only really be able to add fat. It's not a perfect score though and some individuals generally have been able to break through and go even further beyond, you know, Dragon Ball Z quote, even without steroids. But as a rule, this is how far you can expect to go. So if I have an FFMI of 23.065 and the maximum is 25, that means I have achieved 92.26% of my genetic potential. Work out how close you are to achieving yours and you can start to picture just how much bigger you could potentially get. Know this though, the closer you start to get to your genetic limit, the harder it will become to add on more muscle. This is why experienced athletes can often be quite jealous of beginners who still experience noob gains. But it's good news if you're currently very skinny because it means you'll be able to really start piling on the pounds quickly with the right regimen. With that out of the way, we can finally work out your AMR and BMR. So what exactly are these numbers? Well, your BMR is your basal metabolic rate. This is just how much energy, in calories, your body needs in order to live. This is assuming you're not moving at all, you're just lying there. 
your body will still need to use up energy simply to maintain your systems, you know, to help you blink, breathe, digest and pump blood around your body. Your AMR is this number plus the number of calories you're burning through movement and exercise. When you combine those two things, what you're left with is the total energy demand of your body on an average day. This in turn tells you just how much you need to eat if you want to avoid burning fat and how much you need to eat if you want to encourage burning fat. Because if you were trying to lose weight, then you would need to remain on a calorie deficit. That would mean you'd be eating fewer calories than you burn throughout the day. As a result, your body will be forced to burn fat in order to fuel your various movements or just to keep your heart beating. But you're not trying to lose weight. In fact, you're trying to gain weight, albeit a certain kind, and that means you need to maintain a caloric surplus where you consume more calories in the day than you use up. This in turn will mean that your body then has extra calories to spare and it will most likely store those calories as fat around the body or use them to build muscle or provide you with fuel to move around with. You don't want to go too far into surplus or you'll end up looking huge and blobby while also breaking out in bouts of acne. Instead, you need to go just far enough into surplus and that's why you need to get scientific and you need to calculate precisely how many calories you need and how many you're eating. There are numerous equations for calculating BMR, but the one we're going to use is based on your lean body mass. Now, this is very important because muscle is more metabolically active than fat. If you're very heavy due to a lot of muscle, then you'll burn more calories simply to maintain and operate all that muscle mass. So the equation looks like this. BMR equals 370 plus brackets 9.79757519 multiplied by LBM in pounds. So when I take my 162.288 and put that in, I get a BMR of 1960. This means if I just lay there all day, I would lose weight unless I ate at least 1,960 calories, or kcal. Now let's add in activity. And this is going to be something of a rough estimate, but this following list should help. 1.2, if you're sedentary, that means you get little or no exercise. 1.375, if you're slightly active, in other words, you exercise one to three times a week. 1.55 if you're moderately active or you exercise or work out about average. 1.725 if you're very active, in other words you train hard for six or seven days a week or you do a job that requires a lot of time on your feet. And 1.9 if you're highly active, you know, you're a physical laborer or a professional athlete. If you feel you're somewhere in the middle, then guesstimate the number that's somewhere in the middle. Unfortunately, there's never a way to be absolutely sure. I'm probably around 1.6 as I train a lot, but I'm certainly not a professional athlete or a physical laborer. So that gives me an AMR of 2,488, which is actually quite average for a male. The average is generally thought to be about 2,500. Calculate yours and now you have your AMR. Note that there are other ways you can calculate your calorie expenditure too. One example is simply to wear a good fitness tracker that includes a heart rate monitor. Some good examples include the Fitbit Surge, the Charge HR, the Microsoft Band 2 or the Garmin VO Active HR. If you're watching this a few years in the future, then probably there are better models out there by now. Either way, a fitness tracker works by using an optical sensor on the wrist to measure your heart rate throughout the day. The best models will take regular readings and combine this with information you entered about yourself and movement data picked up from a pedometer, gyroscope and accelerometer. When all this information is collated, you can then be given a rough calorie burn estimate for any given day. The other great thing is that you can sync this with MyFitnessPal, which is a smartphone app and website where you can log everything you eat. 
This lets you see your total calories in and out and will adjust the number whenever you go on a long walk or do a workout or perhaps have a day where you move very little. And by comparing these two numbers, you can make sure you stay in that surplus. If it's 11 p.m. and you haven't been too active and haven't eaten much, you know you need to get busy and down some bulking powder. So we've gone through all we did in the last video, just to get your calorie burnt for the day. But this is absolutely crucial because maintaining a calorie surplus is going to be the single most important factor when it comes to bulking. As long as you're eating more than you're burning, then you will get bigger over time. So just why is a calorie surplus so important? Well, the first and most obvious reason is that building muscle requires energy. You're asking your body to construct new tissue from the protein in your diet, and that means you're going to need to eat more to provide that energy. The other reason is you're trying to prevent the breakdown of muscle. When you're low on energy and your body is forced to burn fat, it goes into a catabolic state. First, your body notices your stomach is empty. This causes a release of ghrelin, the hunger hormone. That in turn triggers the release of cortisol, the stress hormone, which is designed to encourage your brain to go and seek out food. Your body is now in a catabolic state where it will burn fat and use it for fuel. But that cortisol also triggers the release of something else, myostatin. Myostatin is one of the single biggest enemies of bodybuilders because it tells the body to break down muscle. Muscle is very energy demanding and not very energy efficient. As we've seen, simply having muscle increases your BMR. Thus, if you're starving and your body is low on the sugars and ATP it needs to run, it's going to want to break down muscle and certainly not prioritize it for building. What's more, this will release some additional energy that your body can use. So being in a calorie deficit puts you in an anxious, skinny, lean and efficient mode. Conversely though, when you eat large amounts of calories, it lets your muscles swell up because you're creating the right environment. Your body will store some of that energy as glycogen you know, right in the muscle cells and make them look even bigger. And when you provide the correct stimulus for growth, your system will respond by building. This is also why rest is so important and why you need to train without exhausting yourself. The goal of training is not to burn calories, just to provide stimulus for growth. You're aiming to get pumped in the gym and then spend the rest of the time eating and resting. I call this living like a lion. So the next question is just how many calories you actually need in order to bulk. Obviously, this is dependent on the AMR, as we've just worked out. But how many more calories than that should you aim for? The answer again varies and is dependent on various factors, such as whether you're more interested in a lean bulk, meaning that you add muscle with very little body fat, or a dirty bulk, meaning that you add both muscle and fat. A very clean bulk is achievable with something like 150 to 200 calories a day. A slightly clean bulk is around two to 300, and if you want a dirty bulk, you could go up to 400 to 450. Higher than that though, and you're starting to get into fat territory. You're gonna place a bit of strain on your body and potentially cause acne and other problems, and this can also be unhealthy. So, which should you choose? Well, if you're someone who's very skinny and you're just starting out, you can go for a pretty dirty bulk with a surplus of three to 400 calories. Because right now, you're probably in a position where you want to be a lot stronger. You may have tried to bulk in the past and been disappointed. But at the same time, you're a noob, which means you have the potential for noob gains. In other words, you had the potential to bulk up and fast if that's what you want to do. And in your current situation, it probably is what you want to do as well. Later on, you can do a shortcutting cycle in order to bring your body fat back down and reveal the definition and striations. Conversely, if you're someone who's an average size right now, perhaps a mesomorph, 
then you may well be a little stocky, but also carrying around a bit more fat than you want. If you're already at around 12 to 15 percent body fat, then you'll probably want to avoid adding too much extra, and so in that case, you'll do better to bulk a little slower without so much excess. And finally, if you're someone who is at or around their genetic potential, or you're someone who is already in good shape, then a clean bulk is the safest way to go.